Hey there folks, welcome to the latest episode of the podcast and this is the podcast with no name with my friend Sandy Chug and me Husty talking about other nonsense we think is worth a blather. Okay, two pals in a room, two cameras, two microphones, just going for it. And this one we're going to do a little follow up because we did touch on it before and that was a hate crime act. So, Sandy, how the devil are you? Eh, uh, I'm no bad big man. My illness just kicked in a wee bit this week. We're struggling a wee bit. No, your, I mean, your illness? Yes, you know, my illness. The illness we both suffer from. You can be okay one day, no. Well, ah, right. Okay. Right. Did you just, never phone me? Ah, because you know me. Life sometimes gets in time. But I'm all right now. This is partly my, my wee therapy. I like doing this. This is therapy for me, you know what I mean? Ah, therapy yeah. talking to me. Oh, yeah. I love, ah, I love a bit of therapy. I like people fucking, you know what I mean, abusing me and lying and that. Keep it up. Love it. Love it. So, hate crime. What have we learned last week? We've learned that the Hamza's dad's um, office, his accountancy office, had to take down some posters which were deemed offensive. Did you pick up on that? Yeah, I just picked up a wee bit in it this morning. I think a couple of things online and that. And uh, you've got to laugh. If that's not a hate crime, what, what isn't it? It really, I mean, there's a couple of things I know there was... There was, it, I mean, is this retrospective? Have you found out it's no retrospective? I don't know. I've got a... a, a next week, uh, I've got a top KC. I keep calling him a QC because that mm -hmm. seems more logical. I, mean, I just kind of get a KC and the sunshine band out my head with a new title. Walking on sunshine. That's oh. a... <laughs> right, OK. Hey, I'm available for weddings, bar vegetables and christenings. Right, and I'm cheap. I'm cheap. So... Uh, I plan to talk to him about that. Um, he's doing a murder trial just now, so this week he's kind of busy. So I'm going to um, pop along and do a, a wee Q and A with him, going over the hate crime and some of the questions. And hopefully, if, if anybody's got any interesting questions that they want to ask, stick them in the comments below, and I'll take a note of them and I'll compile them uh, to when I go and see the case. But um, yeah, so I'm not sure if it's retrospective or not. But basically, for anybody that missed it, Hums' his dad's got an accountancy business and. He had a poster up which showed a map of the full of Israel, including the West Bank and Gaza, and it had the, pa the Palestine flag over the whole thing, and I can't remember the word, and I think it was Free Palestine or something like that, and the suggestion, obviously, that there should be no Israel. So, um, what did you think of that? Well, does that mean that Hamza's dad truly is no a Muslim, but an Islamist? Because he's, because he's purporting to wipe out people who are under the same faith as them. Well, I, I think it's interesting because I can't read a guy's mind, but neither can the people who are going to apply this hate law. And the, the, the suggestion is, is that if, even if it's inferred this hatred, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that needs to be your belief. Mm -hmm. If I put that same poster up in my window after the 1st of April, regardless of what I think of Israel as a, as a state, the, the actual... The law says that that will be mm -hmm. um, considered a, a hate crime, so... Mm, well, we're going to talk about a subject later on, right? Right? But it sounds like maybe go technology or craft or beans that maybe can read your mind. I doubt it. Mm, do you think Hums are as of as a, of as if? I have my doubts, but yeah. I don't know where this conversation's going. Well, it's just a wee bit of light banner, because we're going on to this subject that's dear to my heart, right? So... Make sure you stay tuned to the next half of your segment right after this one. Thank you. So, you know, I, I think it's it's a, a perfect example of something that could happen next week that could be reported and probably tick the boxes for a, for a hate crime. Um, I think there's a lot of things that Hums has done mm -hmm. over the, the, the last piece that if he was to do them again after the 1st of April, regardless if it's retrospective or not this act, then he could um, face criminal charges. I did see what, what, I know you think this, this might be daft, right? But Humzer's a Dundonian. Well, he lives in Dundee. But is he not originally from Dundee? No, he's originally from south side of Glasgow. Oh, is he? Oh, right, sorry. Well, I can't say anything, because I was just a wee bit curious how a Dundonian family had a, an accountancy firm or all things in ah, oh, that, That's where his family's from. When he was a kid, he went to Hutchie. He went to Hutchie Grammar. Oh, very posh. school way at... Uh, Sanwa. Sarwa. Uh-huh. I, I do. I have a, I have a very good friend whose ex-girlfriend is married on to a Sarwa. Sarwa family, yes. And? I'm just, just throwing it into the conversation. You know what I mean? Name dropper, name dropper. Yeah. Name dropper alert, name dropper alert. 
No, but just 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 just, just, just for a throw in there. Just and she says that they're very good people, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm sure they are. See, since we last spoke, which was a week ago, what else have you came across yourself with um, people discussing hate crime? Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff they down south and uh, abroad and that, and honestly, we're getting apt. Well, we're not getting slaughtered. The First Minister's getting slaughtered. And uh, I mean, we're a laughing stock. An absolute laughing stock. And I'll repeat what is the common theme every one of them says is the most draconian law, senseless and nonsense law ever, ever uh, be made official in a Western democracy. That that the the laughing at us, but on the same side they realise how serious it is. And as you say, I've I, I, I seen your wee podcast earlier on the day, and you were saying about Hamza making a fool of yourself. And but well, he does. He's keep doing it, Hamza. You're doing a great job. I think Hamza Youssef is probably one of the best adverts for not having independence. Than anybody I know that actually. I'm, wants I'm, to remain, I'm going to tell you my own opinion. See, independence and independence movement, it's done. It's totally done. Anybody thinks it's no. You're wasting your vote, right? You're asking for mere polls, mere ineptitude, schools getting even worse, NHS, NHS getting even worse, right? Let's get independence off the table. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. And some of you horrible, evil cranks who have told me, are they already old so and so will be dead now? Right? You'll still know when it. Right? Just forget it. I told you last week, go to the island, declare a republic, right? And call it the Republic of Gotland, because it's beautiful out there. And there's uninhabited, right? And you waste that much money, you should be able to start your own community and know that. Go there and let us all live in peace, please. Because see all this, you can dress it up any way you want. It's nothing but anti-English tripe, and you know what? Here's a wee favour. See your microphone. Going to have it pointing up to me. Just that uh, there was sometimes last week it was losing a wee bit. So if it's pointing up to me, there's a better chance it'll pick you up. Well, there, there lies a political broadcast by the Chug Party. <laughs> um, the other thing that I've picked up on this week, just last night, was Hums has came out and said that Nicola Sturgeon is going to be out campaigning for people to vote SNP when the gen- once the general election's called. And I thought, your answer. Because again, I think her out um, campaigning will actually put people off that aren't already put off by Hamza. And that's, now listen, let's, let's just call a spade a spade. Nicola Sturgeon was, regardless of your opinion or my opinion of her, she was a popular politician. She, she, was, she was very good at oration and very good... She was a formidable politician, no, let's just say that. She might not have been great, 100% great. Can I just ask her, no? Are they going to get the battle bus back? The caravanette or whatever? Uh, like, vote SNP. Right, we didn't buy this fraudulently. No. That's, it's an own goal of the day, that, surely. Well, the, apparently, according to mainstream media, they've, they've asked if they can get it back, but they've not declared whether they want to get it back to use it as a battle bus or they want to get it back to sell the thing because they're skint. So... It might be that they run it back to use it, but it, I think equally is uh, is likely that they want it back because they're, they're skint and they've got an election to fight. And the last two years' accounts have shown losses, so I don't know where they're going to get any money to hold a, um, a campaign for a general election. So it would be good to hear what they plan to do with it, but I don't know how that conversations went. But I would imagine while there's still investigations into the fraudulence and misuse of funds, etc., then it might be it's just not possible. But I wouldn't mind clarity on what they intend to do with it if they, um, they were to get it back. But see on the, the point, excuse me, the Nicola Sturgeon, you've gave me a can of fizzy juice just to get me to riff, didn't you? And I've got my opinion on um, Nicola Sturgeon, and I think it would actually be a negative because if there was an election for Westminster, two years ago, and she was no longer the First Minister, I can understand them wheeling her out would be a positive, because Mm -hmm. she was held in high regard by a lot of people. Let's just be honest about it. But I think now, you know, she's she's, she's under um, investigation for fraud, for misuse of funds, for all these things, but she's also, I just found out yesterday, 
She's also subject to an investigation for breaking the 2005 um, Inquiries Act, I believe it's called, where these WhatsApps getting deleted and stuff might be a, a, an illegal thing because everybody was aware at that point that there's going to be an, a, a, an investigation inquiry into COVID. And apparently, if you're a, a person who knows you're going to be liable to be called up for any part of the inquiry, to delete anything is illegal. Mm -hmm. So there's, she's getting investigated for all this. So I don't see how wheeling her out is a, is a positive at all, would you think? I think it's a positive for the other, the other parties. Uh, and... I don't know. I, I think Nicola still wields a lot of power. The same when we Alec went, and I've, uh, I, I, is Nicola wanting to go? Is she asking? Is she demanding? Or are they asking her? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. The way Holmes was talking is if it's a done deal. So I would imagine it would be agreed that it would look absolutely stupid if she doesn't come out and, 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 and get part of it now. But the, here's a question I need to ask, right? When you go to any election, I believe there's three types of people. Mm -hmm. There's people that are definitely going to vote for you. There's people that are definitely not going to vote for you. Mm -hmm. And there's the people in the middle that might vote for you. Mm -hmm. And I can't see any of them getting attracted to Nicola Sturgeon as Nicola Sturgeon presents herself today. Mm -hmm. But if you were to put in front of people two years ago, mm -hmm. then these ones in the middle, I think some of them might have voted just because Nicola said. See my opinion on it. Nicola needs to come out of hiding. Right? Because hiding away, and let's be honest, she doesn't stay at her own house on a regular basis. Right? That's common knowledge, right? Yeah, that's no, it's no thing, mate. It's no. It's common knowledge. You don't stay in the house. You come back uh, now and again to charge something. Charge a car. Charge a car, right? So I don't know what's going on in that relationship, but uh, I think it's a, a total one goal, an absolute gift. Yes, I thought she never goes to Parliament now. She's friends. She ever there to rep, you know to to. to... So what's she hiding from? Well, if she's on, this is what I'm thinking. Her constituents, she's meant to go to Parliament and, and serve them as best she can. Now, if she's not going to Parliament, how can you wheel her out in a campaign trail? Because her, her constituents would be like, hold on a minute, your job is, you're now an MSP, you're not even in the Cabinet, you're not on, um, you're not the First Minister anymore, so you're just a normal MSP like the rest of them, you know, the other hundred that are there. Why are you not just being our MSP? And if she can't go to Parliament, but can go out in the campaign trail with or, with or without the battle car camper van. I just think it's got a bad optic. Well, do you know something? She's still drawing a weight. So what's she taking? She committing fraud again? Take money under false pretenses? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if there's any laws into how many times you must be in Parliament. I don't know if there is a, a minimum per year, but... Do, do, do you know what I was laughing at? Why the things are not politically? I don't know where I've seen it, but I think there was copies of texts uh, of WhatsApps between Humza and Nicola, during the COVID, doesn't look too good for you, Hamza, you know, wee bottom licking brown nose and so and so. Oh, boss, boss, boss. You know what I mean? That, that, that kind of gives a flavour to what somebody is. You know what I mean? Boss, do you want to go to the job? He's a bit creepy, I think, isn't he? I think he's duplicious. What does that mean, Sandy? Duplicious, well, basically, he will look smoke mirrors. He'll present one thing when he's really something else. So you're trying to. Uh, you're, you're trying to fool somebody, basically, to put, right? Now, you know, my, you know my, by the way, for any of you that don't know, right, I'm a published author, right? Uh, so, that's how, I'm not that daft, okay? Listen, let's just be honest here, right? There's two books out in the world now, and I've been out for, one for 10 years and one for 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. One shows you as I author of a book, and one shows me as the author of a book. I couldn't write a newspaper article. I could. I know you didn't write your book. I, that book was all my uh, words. Okay. It was, it was ghostwriting this thing, mate, but it was all my words. As and do you want to know something? I should have really wrote it myself, but I just didn't have the time, I didn't have the desire, and didn't have the... Right, and I tell you what, there's about another six or seven books in me you've ever decided. Right? Watch our space. Yeah. Well, aye. So, but this isn't a plug for any books, because I don't even know if you can buy mine still. Oh, and by the way, mine sell much more than Hoosties, right? Mine's went to a good cause. don't know where Hoosties went, right? Probably a hair transplant. It went rang in Turkey, right? And his teeth, I don't know what happened with his teeth and all, because he'd tell me he was on holiday in Turkey a couple of years ago, but he had a big swave of bandages when he said. Well, see, to be honest with you, 
I think all bar five hundred pound of mine went to start my football club. Same here. See, people don't know that. Is it Macy, Macy? Do you know the reason that the, the, the other five hundred quid Christmas was coming up? My two kids and I was skin. That was that. But the rest of it went. <laughs> I don't know, but but I think I see. Right, we're gonna have topic here, right? Can I like think I know? Going on about a hate crime, right? We all know that Nicholas nicknaming well behind her back anyway in Parliament seaweed. Them that doesn't know that the apparently she's that ugly, the tide won't even take her out right. Is that offensive? I don't know. Well, I suppose if you're Nicholas Sturgeon, it's offensive, aye. Well, my name's Sandy offensive. Chug, and I've heard every single. You no, know I mean, the best one came for a guy. Uh, that sounds off a sore. That sounds like a you know what, on a beach. Aye. And know what, he tried to get a reaction off me, and I was absolutely killed myself. Right, I actually ended up kind of quite pallid, but after the, the days of Sons of Struth. Right, but you we're going to have to think that again. You were called the masturbate on a beach without right. using the word masturbate to describe the action. I, and, and people wonder how I grew up with a trip, my shooter, know what I mean? In East End of Glasgow, no being the biggest guy. And you know I mean? my best one, and again, when I was christened it, I, done, I actually just burst out laughing, was Uncle Fester. Aye, aye. <laughs> that was just aye. class. And they made up, um, is it a meme you call it? Aye, aye. And it had Uncle Fester with a Sons of Truth badge. Really? I like that. I like him. I, I, I can laugh. I don't take life too serious. You know what I mean? Sometimes it would be hard with my kids when we were younger. Not I mean, but one particularly vicious, nasty wee guy. The one day I'll probably bump into. I know who you do not mention his name because no, I don't. know quite exactly who you're talking about. I know he was very, feelings. very lucky during that. That's all I'll say. Right? He was very lucky until somebody shopped him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For, um, and somebody who, funnily enough, supported the same football club as him, not me and you. Mm -hmm. And came to me and said, "By the way, I know that guy X, Y, and Z, and he, he was he was doing something that he shouldn't do." He actually done it again, I believe. And that had something to do with. Yeah, um, actually, he actually was receiving funds that he something. shouldn't. He was actually investigated again for that quite mm -hmm. recently in the recent past. Is that right? So I've so I've so a wee bird they told me. So I maybe just do a podcast about him. No, I wouldn't be up here. Honestly, see you. You'll know if you watch us. You probably will because you used to have posters of me up your bed and don't say that you didn't. Right? Okay, you're obsessed with me. Uh, me, me and you come face to face one day. I'm no threatening you that, right? Okay. And you actually be surprised. You actually be surprised how better looking I'm than you and how intellectually and morally superior I'm. Okay. And your crappy, I don't know if your crappy wee business venture's still gone because I think he, I think he folded about six companies and all, but we're going to have to top it again. Yeah. I'll go. Yeah, I mean, but, but are we? Because we're, 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 we're talking about hate crime and what you talking about, see if that guy was to do what he said things about you and me publicly 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. If he was to do them next month, mm -hmm. there's a potential that he could be breaking up. I mean, he was very lucky. He did really upset my youngest at the time, my daughter. Mm -hmm. And that really, it, that was like red rag to a bull. And that's all I'm willing to say about it. But again, get back onto the political stuff, right? See if I call hums or hums are useless or dumbs are useless. Can that be a hate crime? Because that could be construed. Because he's one of the special people, isn't he? He's he's in a protected group. But is he? When, when oh, what? he's more protected than anything. <laughs> right. kid yourself. But what what protected group does he come under? With the with the ones that are listed on the act? Is there one for stupid? No. If there was, we would we wouldn't have this conversation because he would definitely qualify for that. But um, unless he believes that you are hateful to him because of his religion, because he's not old, he's not. Handicapped, he's not it's transgender, not right? Craig is disabled, he's not disabled, he's not transgender unless he started as a woman, and I don't think that's true. So, the only protected group I believe that he could possibly fall into would be the religious one. So, what you would, about the race one? Of course, as, as race is it? As race I don't know, race sure, race sure race race and religion must be so under. unless he, he was to be able to prove. But then he doesn't need to because it just has to be the perception that see there's the thing see if I say something bad about you or do something bad about you if you think that that is just purely because of your age then that's enough to put a, a complaint on mm -hmm. and that's where the, the law is really going to get tested because if you believe I say something to you about you right and you believe that is just purely based on your age which is a protected group within not the act then you could quite easily go and say a complaint, and you could. I could say to you, "You're thick," and you could say, "He's," uh, or "I'm going to batter you," right? And you could say, "He said he's going to batter me," which is, you know, I get violence attached to it. And he only done it because I'm old. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think I, I think just saying your own statement a fact. I, I don't get that. Same as saying well, it, it actually doesn't say stupid. It doesn't say age either. Uh, old either. It's age. So you're you're a wee young so and so. Ah, you're a baby. I don't know, mate. It's just it's a pure. What about hey, do I know something? See what this is opening a can of worms for as well. I, I, I miss, I'd, I can have caught a wee bit from you were saying Hermes was discriminating against, against women, so I come on to that, just a wee yeah. caveat to that. But like, say you've got uh, orange hair, bushy eyebrows, a beard, you walk with a lump. Oh, Are they all getting right. discriminated against with us? All right, well, the lump doesn't come no, in yet, no, right? No, 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 no. It could be an accident. You could be cut up. Remember, you had a lump for about a year after your broken leg. That was your fault. <laughs> no. See, uh, you, you, were, you, were, you made a point there about the women. And what I'm saying is women are not a protected um, group. But somebody who says they're a woman is protected. I think, or likewise, somebody who says they're a man. But what, what if a woman says she's a woman? Well, she is. Right, but... So so did he not get the same protection as a man who's biologically a man, but identifying as a woman? So... Is that, was that the point you were trying to make now? If you have a point, if you have a pop at somebody for being a woman, I do not believe that would be covered under the Act. But if you have a pop at somebody who is a man who says he's a woman, mm-hmm. then they are protected under that Act. And I, I find but, that incredible. But what have you, like, I don't like, I, I'm not, I, I swear that to report, by the way, right? I'm not going to kid myself enough. I'm trying to talk a wee bit posh here just now because see some of the captions. Oh, no, see, if I watched the captions from last week, or oh, honestly, see if, you, see if you're feeling doing or really doing or not. Turn on the captions to the conversation, especially when I speak. Somebody, somebody brought it up in the thing, honestly, hilarious. Hilarious. But, eh, uh, I just don't get that. I don't get that. So, what you're saying is, women have fought for equality all these years, right? And has it just been weak right away from them? Well, listen, I could be wrong, you know, it has happened in the past, I'm perfectly... <laughs> I want to accept that I'm not writing everything I say, but from what I can understand, and again, I'll clear this when I talk to the KC next week, but from what I can read into the law, women as such are not protected, unless they tick one of the other boxes, but being transgender is. Well, so, I, I just, and the other thing that I was saying was the way it's reported. I believe the two worst crimes you can commit are murder and rape. Now, anybody that commits murder, the victim cannot Obviously. What about, what, about, what about child pornography? I think that's bad, aye. Aye, but it's not right. I get but you. But if the child's been raped, scale, then it's, it's I've already, you know, I'm talking about rape of, of adults and children here, aye, right? But, right? So I think murder's the worst crime you can commit because somebody dies. But if you commit murder, the victim cannot go and report the crime because they're dead. So the worst crime possible that you might have to go and um, report is rape. Now that's rape, whether it's a woman that's raped or a child that's raped. What about a man? Aye, but many things really does that. Ah, but, 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 hey, everybody then, right? right? That's what I'm saying. Because I don't want anybody thinking that we're, we're trying to discriminate. You've got, to, you've got to... Right, so the worst... Let's just accept, my opinion is, the worst crime you could possibly have to report is rape, right? Now, if you have to do that and you need like phone 999 or 101 or have to go and visit a police station, I believe that is actually a harrowing experience. But for this crime... They're making it easier because you can go down to Jack and John's or whatever the bloody hell it is down at the, the, the Gallagate where there's a, a transvestite or a transgender sex, sex shop. But in the Jack and Jones shop? You're, no, no, the name it's called. No, because I like Jack and Jones denims. And no, it's not Jack and It's two guys, Luke, Luke and John or something like that, right? Biblical. Aye. So you can go in there or there's a mushroom farm in the Orient's that you can go to. Aye. No, there is churches and house Mad? associations. Mushroom farm? A, a mushroom farm. And... and I take it they've got training for us. Do they get training off the government? They must. You would kind of hope so, right? Right, so what you're trying to tell me, it's a good possibility somebody from the SNP or the Scottish government go in there. There must be an, an ulterior motive to that, especially right. mushrooms and vulcans. Right. You must be on magic mushrooms to try to bring in that sack. Can I get to my point? I'm sorry, right. I've got it for you. Sorry. So, my whole point is, if you believe you are, and nobody else in the world even believes you are a um, victim of hate crime, the process is made very, very easy for you to be able to go and do it, go and, and report it. And I'm not saying crime should be hard to report, but what I'm saying is this stupid law is far easier to report and the conditions set out by the bill are far easier for the victim, prob- the possible victim, and either a woman or a child or even a man 
that has been a victim of rape. And that doesn't sit well with me. I think the worst crime in the world should be easier to report than this thing that's just going to be absolutely filled by crackpots online, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm quite sure, though, that once you're in the process, that there is good support there for rape victims, regardless of their age or, or gender or sex. So, but with these, it just, it just doesn't sit well with me at all. That It's actually, it's as if they're wanting to fill the courts with this stuff. And I, I, I don't really think, see what this is all about. This is another gimmick of a law designed to try to get votes. To, see, Humza, Humza's no happy. Same, same as that time, I can't remember, was it Sturgeon? They're no happier unless Scotland's got to be different for the big bad English, big bad mess, Westminster. Have to be right on, woke, yoghurt, nothing, you name it, right? Okay, because it, because honestly, this law makes as much sense as somebody trying to knit a iron cardigan with a yoghurt. Right, let's not kid ourselves. Right, and this is what I'm saying about the magic mushroom. It's absolute poppycock thing, me. And I tell you what, you've made a good point. See, the people who this is aimed at protecting will probably be the people who hurts most because, because as you say, they are the righteous ones. Yeah, yeah, or they yeah. think they're the righteous yeah. ones. Yeah. As I've said in a, in a couple of videos before, that just like the Offensive Behaviour of Football Act, the people who were celebrating the thing coming in because they felt the people on the other side were going to get um, prosecuted more, mm -hmm. it didn't work out that way. And because what happened was the people on one side thought, you know what, this new thing, I better just maybe, you know, watch my words a wee bit more careful. But those who felt that they were always in the right side of things never changed a thing and they ended up getting, and I think this is the same, see the most woke people in the world, they do not believe they could ever do anything bad. Right, so, two things, right? The, the, I really struggle with this and all. You know what it's like bringing up kids, right? You know, you go into other people's houses and all that, and you'll get men who, who are, you brought them up well, right? But they'll be perfect for them to see in the house. They'll go, I hate you, you're a bad dad, you're a me, right? So, can I then go, that's born by hate, can I prosecute mine? Waiting for, see, or see, like Sir Humza in his private, and he says, I really hate the Tories. Because he does, let's not kid yourself, Humza, right? You're committing great time the new with your rhetoric about Tory voters. It's a democracy. It's a, people are entitled to vote who you are, right? Okay, what are you going to do? You're going to invade Norway next or something? Well, see, see, on that point, I don't really have the big issue with saying he read Scotland the Tories, right? Because I want to read Scotland the SNP, so I can't. That's no, to me, that's no the problem I'm talking about in private. Right, but in the afters that he put on it, and it wasn't just the party, it was their policy, their, their, their theories, uh -huh. their, uh, think, the way that, you know, I, any any of their principles. And then he made a caveat to that, and he says, and I'm, only, I'm not just talking about blue rosettes, I'm talking about red rosettes as well. So we're talking about Labour. Correct, and a lot of people missed that. So a lot of people were saying, oh, he's talking about 700,000 Scots because that's how many voted Tory, right? But he's no, he's actually talking about all the ones that vote Labour as well. And I thought, you just want, a, the way I've read that is you just want ready everybody. And okay. if that's no hateful, I don't, as I say, I don't have a problem with, and I can't have a problem with him saying, I want to rid Scotland the Tories. Because my aim as soon as the GE general election's can, uh, called is, I want to have a campaign I rid Scotland to as many SNP as possible. Right? Excuse me. But it was the add-ons to that about their philosophies and their theories. And you're like, there's people who are not Tory party members or voters that will still have Tory philosophies and principles in their life. The SMPs full of Tories. Don't kid yourself. Oh, here's one thing. one thing. Is the Conservative Party one of their theories and principles to go out, make a difference, work hard, and generate an income? Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to rid Scotland of that, going by what mm -hmm. he said last weekend at their convention. And that's about I've got a problem with. No, the fact they said rid the world at all, uh, rid the, 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 the Scotland the Tories, I genuinely don't have a problem with that. Because I feel the exact same about SNP. See, I, see what I think would be a good idea. See, like, obviously, they've had a heated debate at First Minister's question, and they go back to their MB personal office and all that. I'd like Humza to be wired up. Because I bet he goes in and says, I fucking hate that. So and so, that fat old what old bastard or whatever, that fucking ranger support and that hun bastard. And I guarantee you he says things like in fact I know because he's used rhetoric like that before in the distant past when you were parley with certain people, right? Certain Republican people. Okay? So don't say you don't you, you might be no new now that you've rose up the ladder, but I've seen some of your hateful comments about my particular uh 
beliefs and my particular tribe of people. Okay, so I would like to see practice what you preach. Oh, and on that, I think that's probably a good note. Can I just one more thing, right? Because okay. I, because we don't know if this hate crime is going to be retrospective. So can I make one last statement? No, please. Got it. Right, see me. I have always absolutely hated everybody and everything, and that includes myself, because I'm a great believer us humans are a plague, okay? I don't discriminate about who I hate. It may be partly my illness, right? But, yeah, that was a partly political broadcast from Sandy Chuck. <laughs> I'm a bam, I know I'm a... Hey! Oh, but why am I doing this? Why, God, why am I doing this? Anyway... As I always say at the end of the videos, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please uh, subscribe and get involved in the comments below because they're a good laugh, all right? And unless your humza one of the kill or even Nicola Sturgeon, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.